are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome to my channel. Happy Holidays if you celebrate. I don't, or I didn't this year, which was kind of lovely. Missed my family at Christmas. Not a big fan of Christmas, to be honest. But nothing going on the slightest bit Christmassy for me. I worked on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I made money. Kenji and I didn't even so much as say Merry Christmas to each other. We were both so busy with our work and we had this big project at home. Too boring to explain in detail, but basically we're subletting this apartment from our good friend and he and his wife moved into a new apartment. They are very kind in letting us stay, but they had loaned us, while well, they were out of the country for a year, all of their furniture and dishes and stuff, and they obviously needed all that stuff. So we didn't get a lot of notice to get it all ready for them, but they needed it, we understood, and it's gone. Oh my God, what a production. Saturday, the new furniture we bought from the used furniture shop will be delivered and all will be well but i have been so busy with that i could hardly think straight in spite of all that busyness i did have a fairly good reading week and have some stuff to tell you so let's get started i have finished two books the first one is this anthony trollope no novel lady anna you will remember that i picked this up because i had that waiting for the other shoe to drop on finished feeling because I bailed on Trollope's Phineas Finn during Victober and had such a hankering for another Trollope. And Beyond the Pages was reading this at the time and she recommended it to me very highly. I don't know that she was finished when she recommended it to me. Because it's, this novel started out really good, but it was not good either. I did finish it, but it was a three-star read, if that. Basically, I, the things that were really stupid about it were so bad but I still gave it three stars because I kept turning the pages. The story was really interesting, and the issues that were being quote-unquote discussed in this novel, not in a very satisfying literary way, were so darned interesting that, I mean, I was never bored. So, this novel is about Lady Anna. She is born to a mother who has been abandoned by her husband, the Earl, in favor of his... Italian mistress while she is newly pregnant with poor Lady Anna and he says that he was married to the Italian wife and that sets the course for a book-length legal battle between Lady Anna's mother and her father and then her father's estate when he dies because if it was bigamy Lady Anna is no lady and her mother was no countess and that is the central premise of the novel that led the way to one of the fundamental flaws of the novel is that so much of the story is told through the lawyers. And the lawyers don't emerge really as interesting enough characters. And the, the central facts of the narrative being narrated in scenes and memoranda between these lawyers kept me at least, and I would think many a reader, at a fair distance from the story. I also thought that the two central characters is, well, maybe all four central characters. I'm not going to say too much about the men. I don't recommend it very highly, but I'm not going to spoil anything. I will talk about the Lady Anna and her mother, the Countess, but this also applies to the two men. They are constructed around one personality trait only. They were None of them were fully fledged. So the mother, the so-called Countess, her one note is that she is desperate to be recognized, legally recognized as the Countess, and to achieve all of the financial and uh, social benefits for her daughter. That's all there is to her. And then when she is thwarted, she becomes absolutely furious to the point where it just at the end of the story was absolutely ridiculous. Lady Anna, I'm not going to say anything spoilery, but her whole personality is constructed around loyalty and a promise that she made and there's nothing else to her personality she was quite a boring character for a central character and the men uh, they have their own one notes but the plot gets so ridiculous at the end there was not enough characterological scaffolding to make any of that satisfying i was very disappointed but i at no point did i consider bailing because in broad outlines and in terms of the social issues at play here, 
I was interested on that level only. It's not a very good novel. In happier news, uh, just today I finished Audrey Thomas's collection of short stories, Two in the Bush and Other Stories. This was a buddy read with Lindy, and I finished a little bit earlier than I thought today, so I'm still waiting for her final thoughts on the last two stories. Audrey Thomas is an American-Canadian writer. She is 84 years old is far, and still, I don't know if she's still writing. Her last book was published in 2014, but I've always had a soft spot for her short fiction. I haven't read any of her novels, and I enjoyed these. I marked this down on Goodreads as having been read, but that was a mistake. I'm pretty sure I had not read this before, but I sure have read it now. This was a just fantastic collection. Not every story worked. It's a typical short story collection, but the stories that worked were just uh, masterfully done. I always compare her to uh, Alice Munro or Mavis Gallant, and she's a little bit, she's a, a half a tear down from them, but she is well worth your time. My favorite story, I think, was near the end. I thought the stories at the end of the collection were even better than some of the excellent stories earlier. In a Tram was my favorite and there was a metafictional vibe humming throughout it a story about, about women's friendships and envy between women that was reminiscent of margaret atwood that was a particular delight uh, nobody talks about and very few people read audrey thomas anymore i want you to change that i have bailed on one i am expecting this could be my final bail of 2019 chrome yellow by aldous huxley it's one of his early novels and it was Barbara Pym's favorite novel, or at least it was the novel that she read when she was a young woman. It was the first adult novel that she read, and it was the novel that she said later in life made her want to be a writer. So for that reason only, I wanted to read Chrome Yellow. I had read Aldous Huxley's Brave New World in college, and I don't remember anything about it other than I didn't really think it was all that great. And that's all. This was awful. It was some kind of a satire about upper class people having tea parties and staying at each other's houses. The characters were all purposefully made into characters, but I just wasn't interested in it. I also started it on audio and the accents may have fit the characters, but they drove me up the effing wall. And then I got rid of the audio and just read it and I didn't get very far. I just thought this is a book about which Barbara Pym and I do not see eye to eye. And maybe most excitingly, often happens in my Friday reads, that the books I'm most excited about are the ones that I've just started rather than finished. Things have a way of going downhill later. I have started four. I have started this novel by Permal Mergen, Punachi, or The Story of a Black Goat, translated from the Tamil by N. Kalyan Raman, and he is not the translator of the novel that I read at the end of the year last year, which I loved, called One Part Woman. So I was a little nervous, but no, the translation so far is, it's certainly working for me. I am uh, about a fifth of the way in, and yes, this is a novel about a black goat and the uh, poor husband and wife that adopt him and raise him, and it's set in a somewhat future dystopic society. You don't really realize that until a few chapters in, I am engrossed in it. I didn't know how I would take to... Now, it's not a personification, like the goat doesn't talk, although we do... We actually do dip into the goat's consciousness, and that kind of thing is usually a turn-off. It's working for me. I don't know if I'm just feeling in a kind of a end-of-year Santa mood rather than end-of-year Scrooge mood, but it's really uh, affecting. I hope it continues to be. Britta and I are now well into this novel from Saskatchewan, Luna, by Sharon Butala. I might have said last week that this is her debut. It's not true. This is her second novel, published in 1988. And I am just delighted to tell you that Britta and I are both loving it. I don't think much is going to change that in the last fifth or quarter of the novel. I'm surprised. I was so, I don't know, because it's from my home province and also because she's my mom's favorite writer and I had never read anything by her and because Brit is so damn intimidating. Just kidding, Britta. But I, I was a little bit apprehensive about how it would go. Like, what if Britta hated it and I liked it and I felt offended on behalf of my home province, but none of that has happened. In fact, I think in the opening sections or the opening couple sections, she was loving it even more than I was. So we're both really, really enjoying it. It's really moving. It's about a ranching family in southern Saskatchewan, 
and it's about gender. It's about women's lives on the prairie. There's all kinds of things that I'm recognizing, but all kinds of things that make me want to talk to have a really good heart to heart talk with my mom and wish that I could have had those kind of heart to heart talks with my grandmas because the lives described here are full of challenges and horrific misogyny and violence. There's some things about it that are not as polished as they could be, but the emotional power of it and the, the writing, there are scenes that I will never forget about an old woman making bread in a wood stove. A lot of scenes like that that are just so vividly realized. I will have more to say about this later, but it's going really well. I also started my very first novel by Mary Wesley. This is called Jumping the Queue, and I didn't really know anything about Mary Wesley. This was originally published in 1983, and I bought a used copy somewhere along the line and decided that I wanted to fit it in at the end of the year. I wasn't sure in the first couple chapters because we are, there's an elderly lady, I think she's not that elderly, she might only be 65 or maybe 70, and we see her alone and we're just in her head with no interaction between her and other characters, and that kind of a story doesn't work so well. I need some human communication to hold my interest. I've just checked what's written in the back. I never read what's on the back, but I just wanted to know what was safe to tell you. We do learn by the a couple chapters in that she was planning to kill herself, a la Virginia Woolf. And just before she does it, she meets a man who is also planning to kill himself. And they together try to help each other so they both feel cheated out of their suicidal agendas by trying to thwart the other person's suicidal agenda and it works i i it sounds so corny but it's really working so far i'm i'm 50 pages in and there's some humor in it it's in a very vague i wouldn't want to push this too far but in a very vague way it's reminding me of muriel spark in particular the driver's seat is that right the driver's seat then i went and scanned mary wesley's Wikipedia page? I want to read her biography before I read any more of her novels, because her life was just incredibly fascinating. So this is a new discovery at the end of the year for me. I hope I continue to like it. Even if I don't end up loving this novel, I want to read a biography of Mary Wesley. And finally, I started on audio just yesterday, I think, a novel by Colm Toibin, Brooklyn. Now, anytime I've mentioned it on my channel, I get a, a whole swack of comments saying, you haven't read that yet? No, I hadn't. I haven't read any Colm Toibun f for 20 years. Everybody said, oh, you have to, you have to. So I have started it, and I'm doing it on audio, and the audio narration is fantastic. I don't need to consult a text. I'm just sinking into the story. It's a very simple story about a young Irish woman who emigrates to Brooklyn, hence the title, somewhere after the end of the Second World War to make a new life for herself. And it's just very simple. And the emotions, there, there's no black characters. There's no white characters. It's all kind of gray and very well told. I'm really enjoying it. I don't know what else to say about it until I finish. There are two big books that I have been reading for a while that I am kind of ignoring and planning to finish up in January. One of them is The Overstory. I have not bailed. I don't think I'm going to bail, but I had been quite engaged with it, and I've just decided, no, I'm going to pick it up again on New Year's Day. And the same with the biography of the Pankhursts. So those two will carry over, as well as the 35-hour-long audiobook of Samuel Richardson's Clarissa. But I plan to finish everything else up that I'm reading here, and if I do, then I'm going to try to read couple others before the end of the year and I'm not even going to tell you which ones because I don't even know if I'll get to any of them and I want you to look forward to my first Friday reads of 2020 looking forward to chatting with you all next year thanks for watching